Hi, I'm Darren Walker, and this is Inside Louisiana Softball. Tonight, we introduce you to 2018 Newcomer of the Year, Alyssa Dalton. And later, we take a look at Raging Cajun's cheer, making finals for the first time in school history. But first, I sit down with head coach Jerry Glasgow to discuss the weekend series with Georgia Southern and more. You're watching Inside Louisiana Softball. Welcome to Inside Louisiana Softball. Darren Walker joined by the head coach, Jerry Glasgow. The Raging Cajuns win their 50th consecutive Sunbelt Conference Series. And coach, uh, before we get into the, the series with uh, Georgia Southern, I want to ask you a question about no midweek games. Um, would you rather that at this point in the season so you can maybe rest up, or would you rather keep the skill sharp? Well, you know, it takes away one day of practice and, pre you know, preparing for the weekend conference opponent. So the midweeks are a little bit of a distraction in that in that sense. On the other hand, it's always good to get out there and compete in the middle week, and I think the girls would prefer to play. So maybe from the motivation standpoint, it picks you up a little bit to go ahead and have a midweek game. So let's get to Georgia Southern. Uh, game one was a good old-fashioned pitcher's duel. Uh, you guys go uh, five scoreless, but then you're able to manufacture a couple of runs late in the sixth and seventh to win it 2 nothing. Yeah, you know, Summer was on that night, and she just gives us time to – get going and when she's like that she's really she's really uh, special and and we took advantage of it we're able to take advantage of it and then late we got we got some clutch hits and then of course Dalton stole home was a huge play game two, uh, I'm sorry Summer Ellison got the uh, 10 strikeouts and and th through the shutout um, in game two you went with Carrie Boswell she gives you six and two-thirds um, only gives up three runs and really good in the circle that night yeah, Carrie was outstanding, and in fact, she you know get, she got three runs on the books, but the infield was really hard, and the Georgia the fields over there are red clay, mm -hmm. and the sun bakes them this time of year, and they get really hard, and so you have really a bouncy infield, and a lot of the the balls fast and and extremely bouncy, and our kids didn't adjust to that well in the first two games. With Sunday that we did, we played it really well. You have to attack the ball as an infielder, and. I felt like Carrie really pitched well enough to get a shutout that night, and we were thrilled with her effort. In game three, it was moved up to 11 a.m. Uh, Eastern time because of weather concerns. Some tense moments late in that when uh, you had a 3-1 lead in the seventh inning. Uh, the strike zone seemed to shrink a little bit there late for summer, uh, but you're able to uh, – they had the winning run at first base, um, but you're able to pull that one out as well. Yeah, I think we took a 3-0 lead into that game, and – and you know, I was bases loaded in summer. You know, as the first runner I could ever remember her walking in. I think she said it's the first time she ever walked a runner in her life. And you know, there was when you watch the film of the game afterwards, it was it was really a rough inning for the guy behind the plate. <laughs> we'll just leave it at that. But you know, you have to pitch around adversity, and all those things are going to make us better down the road. And we'll look at it from a positive point of view. And and that that little test there at the end of the series, I think, set us up, and that may help us later on in, when we get into postseason. Uh, so you only had one home run this weekend, uh, 11 total runs in the three games. Any concerns uh, with the offense, or are we just getting spoiled by having all these home runs and runs scored? You know, it's, uh, it's uh, hard to understand. You know, we scored 27 runs three weeks ago, 36 runs last weekend, and then this weekend we come in with 11. So I don't know if it's just the law of averages or whether, you know, hitting is contagious and not hitting is contagious, and it can go either way. And uh, hopefully, it will be able to break out of that this week. Be a good night to get started here on Wednesday with McNeese. And I'd like, I'd like to see our offense. I think I expect them to jump back up and score more runs. I think that 36 might have spoiled. This might have been a little bit of an aberration on the high end. And I think 11 is a little bit. I think we can average more than that the next three or four series. So I expect that to be the lowest series of the, of the of this conference season. And I, I hope it is. And but it's contagious, and mm -hmm. everything and momentum is huge in hitting, and and uh, our players that we got on our heels a little bit, and so we'll work on that this week in practice, and and try to get more aggressive and a more positive mindset. Uh, we're gonna hear from Alyssa Dalton here in a few minutes. Just talk about what she's meant to the team, leadership, hitting, defense. You know, Alyssa Dalton is one of the best defensive shortstops in the country. She might be the best defensive shortstop in all of college softball. She absolutely is one of the top three or four in that group. And 
just extremely special. And then when she gets going offensively like she has, last year she led us in hitting, I think, with 365 average. And we've really worked hard on, on making her more power, a more powerful hitter and, and more of a power hitter this year. And I think it took her a little while to adjust her mindset to that. And then she's been red hot here lately. Her average is up to close to 390 now. And, you know, we put her back in the – we had her in the nine hole a couple weeks ago just to get her relaxed and try to challenge her. You know, I put her down in the nine hole and said, when you hit the ball hard, you go back up top. <laughs> Not because she was a nine hole hitter. I just wanted her to really fight to be a better hitter. And she did that and responded so well. And then we put her in the leadoff spot this weekend, and she was fantastic again. So she's just a, a great, great offensive and defensive player. She's got great tools. She got great arm, great glove, great mind, uh, and a fierce competitor. So very fortunate to have her on our ball club. Coach Glasgow will join us later on to talk about the week ahead. But again, up next, Alyssa Dalton. Look at me in the eye. They bleed just like you bleed. There is no apprehension. There is no fear. Bottom line, they gotta come to us to get this done. All right, we decide what happens. We dictate what happens on that field today. Together on three. One, two, three, together. together. The University of Louisiana at Lafayette, our raging Cajun spirit goes beyond athletics. If you're happy and you know it's Zydeco. If you're happy and you know it's Zydeco. If you're happy and you know it, then your feet will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it's Zydeco. If you're happy and you know it's Mange. If you're happy and you know it's Mange. If you're happy and you know it, nothing that will help you show it. If you're happy and you know it's Mange. Mange. Welcome back to Inside Louisiana Softball. Time now to introduce you to 2018 Newcomer of the Year, Alyssa Dalton. My name is Alyssa Dalton and I'm a junior on the Louisiana softball team. Leaving Oklahoma and having to come here was a tough decision because it's kind of, you have a plan since you commit for the four years. So for me, I committed my freshman year of high school. So you kind of have this drawn out plan and dream of what it's supposed to be like. But then once you get there and realize, oh, this might not be my place, it's kind of difficult to like actually step forward and go for a change and go for something different. So coming to Louisiana, I knew on my visit, it kind of like showed to me like that there was a better place for me and that there was a place where I could be home and like comfortable and have everybody around me embrace me with open arms. Playing for Coach Glasgow is like, kind of something different so like you grow up and you play like you play for your dad you play for your mom like the practicing is with your dad and that's kind of how it is still with coach Glasgow like I know that if in the middle of the night I'm crying and need a father figure I can call him at any time but I also know that on the field if I do something wrong he's not willing to or he's willing to like kind of nip it in the butt and get on me about it so just him wanting what's best for you as a person and trying to make you grow on and off the field is kind of the best thing about him because he's such a genuine heart that you don't have to really worry if he has your best intentions at heart because you know he does. Playing one position here has taken a lot of stress off because at OU, as soon as I'd get comfortable in a position, I'd turn around and have to learn a whole new one and a whole new atmosphere. 
So I learned, I finally got outfield down, which I'd never played before. And then they all of a sudden flipped me to catching. So it was just always like being the odd one out, being the one that has to like figure it out and always being the one to mess up, you know? But here, actually having the advantage of knowing the position and knowing everything about it and being able to like look to cast or look to somebody behind me and be like, this is what we're doing here. Like, if you get confused, ask me a question. That kind of gives you a sense of relief and just to, like time to breathe. Being the Sunbelt Newcomer of the Year was a big honor because just seeing that like all the hard work is paying off kind of helps you keep going. Because I know sometimes kids will work super hard and it won't get recognized by everybody. And just having someone say, hey, you did a good job, like we recognize that. It kind of pushes you to keep going. It makes you realize that you have a bigger platform and stage than you really can see. And that there's people behind the scenes that are always looking and always looking for new inspirations, new people to pass the torch to. Louisiana is a completely different atmosphere. You have a lot more to juggle with the crazy crowds, with the different foods. I now have to watch what I eat, which back home I never had to do. Um, it's just, it's very like cultural here and I've never experienced that before because you live in states like Texas or states like Oklahoma and Oklahoma it's like the natives, um, Indians, like stuff like that and that's cool to see but then you come here and it's every corner that you turn there's beads on the tree, there's Mardi Gras signs up, there's people speaking funny like it's just very different and it's pretty cool to see that you could literally travel four hours away from my hometown and be in a whole new world. The average fan that watches me play would probably not know that Behind the dancing and behind the good plays, if I do make them, <laughs> that it's all, it is hard work behind the scenes and that there are days where you can doubt what you're doing, you can doubt who you are. And just like any normal teenage girl, any normal college kid, like you have struggles. But the fact that you're on a team and that you have 24 other girls sitting there ready to pick you up, ready to remind you who you are every single day, that's what they don't get to see because they can see us strike out and they can see us hit a home run, but what they don't see is when we strike out and walk into the dugout, who's walking up to us, like giving us a little pep talk, like, dude, you're good, like, remember who you are. And I think that's kind of a big thing for us this year is everybody gets reminded every second of who they are and who the potential that they can be. And so that's pretty cool and something that not everybody sees. Next on Inside Louisiana Softball. Raging Cajuns Cheer makes finals for the first time in school history. To perform, you need speed, skill, strength. With every muscle, every move, you push your body to reach its full potential. But sometimes, you just can't push through the pain. That's when you know it's time to address it. So when injury puts you on the sidelines, trust us to get you back in the game. Lord Sports Care, the team behind your team. If you're happy and you know it's Zydeco. Zydeco. If you're happy and you know it's Zydeco. Zydeco. If you're happy and you know it, then your feet will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it's Zydeco. Zydeco. If you're happy and you know it, Monge. If you're happy and you know it, Monge. If you're happy and you know it, nothing God will help you show it. If you're happy and you know it, Monge. The Learfield IMG College Directors Cup, the highly recognized mark of distinction in college athletics across all divisions, both men's and women's sports. Follow your favorite team's pursuit for excellence in this prestigious annual award through the directorscup.com, USA Today, or L Directors Cup on Twitter. Learfield IMG College Directors Cup, the crowning achievement in college athletics since 1993. Look at me in the eye. They bleed just like you bleed. There is no apprehension. There is no fear. Bottom line, they gotta come to us to get this done. All right, we decide what happens. We dictate what happens on that field today. Together on three. One, two, three, together. together. Welcome back to Inside Louisiana Softball. Time now for an exclusive look at the history made this year by Raging Cajuns Cheer. 
So your Raging Cajuns earned um, eighth place this past January in the 2019 Collegiate UCA National Championship. And in eighth place, let's hear it for the University of Louisiana Lafayette. This is such an amazing um, accomplishment for us just because this is the largest cheerleading competition in the nation. This is, we can beat in the hardest division, the Division I A co-ed division, um, against story programs like Kentucky, LSU, Alabama. So just making the finals for us was an accomplishment. And then from there to place eighth out of the 25 amazing programs that were in this division was absolutely just something we could only dream of. <laughs> Throughout the entire month of December and a little into January before we go, we literally practice every single day for hours on end and it's honestly a very mentally hard process to go through. We practice twice a day, every day during Christmas break, you know, obviously giving them some time off for Christmas and New Year's. From there, it's treatment every day. It's early morning workouts and just it's, sometimes it's a struggle but this year's team we knew we had the possibility of doing really well at nationals and we all came together and worked really hard. Normally when we pull up to the arena there's those nerves and there's as a coach you wonder did I do enough, did I prepare them enough, are they ready? And I think this year compared to the past years it was such a different feeling for me. So the night before we went out and competed it was so exciting to sit there and talk to everyone about this is it guys, everything, all the hard work we put into all of the preparation for nationals, it comes down to this moment right here. We were all pretty nervous. It was my third time at nationals, I'm a senior, and so I was a little more uh, controlled in my nerves, I guess you could say, compared to some of the rookies, but I was still very nervous because I knew we had a lot on the line. The University of as soon as they run out, you know, you get those nerves, you get those butterflies, and, you know, I tell them, okay, music's on, here we go. And there's that moment of, again, did I do enough? Are they ready? But looking out there and seeing their sense of calm and collectiveness, but also that sense of excitement, I knew that we, they were where they needed to be, and they were 100% ready. To be honest, when the music started, I went through, like, the first couple seconds and just, like, completely forgot what I was doing, and I was like, whoa focus, like remember what you're here for. Our adrenaline is taking over our bodies, but it's not overwhelming because we're excited and we're about to go out there and like show everyone what we worked hard for. Now there's always, you know, that did we do enough? You know, I knew how we did, but I hadn't seen really anyone else in our division that day. Um, and neither had the team. So we just were hoping that what we did was enough and it was. Welcome to UCA College Nationals. Are you ready for our finals? Yeah! There's a video of um, us finding out we were in finals and they and we just start screaming. Tears and more tears and just excitement and cheering. Just honestly, as much as it was surprising, we were like, we earned this. Nerves really didn't go away, but I wasn't as nervous as the first time because making finals was just an accomplishment that we had always wanted to do. So whether we made 13th place or first place, it was an accomplishment to us just to make finals for the first time in school history. Idols of victory, let's give a cheer for the red and white, go to L. We wanted to make it into finals and that was our main goal. It wasn't in the end of it there. We were like, okay, let's, let's get like in the top 10 or top five, we can do it. And we just wanted to go out there and show them what Raging Cajuns could do. We knew that we had not only you know, made our goal of making it to finals, then we hit in finals, so that was another goal. And so at that point, whatever the placements were, wherever the rankings fell, we were so happy. That feeling was something I'll never forget. When we're sitting on stage, calling the names, it goes down 13, 12. Is it gonna be 15? Is it gonna be 12? Is it gonna be 9th? 15th, I was like, cool, okay. We weren't last. I didn't think we'd be last, but you never know, okay? Getting to 12th, and then when they announced LSU, I mean, my jaw dropped. You know, obviously beating such a big in-state rival, that was really, really amazing, and especially such a storied program as LSU, and then they get to top 10, and again, my jaw drops. And in eighth place, let's hear it for the University of Louisiana, Lafayette! We were like, shocked. We were like, 
oh my gosh, like we're really better than what we've credited ourselves for, you know? Just to know how, how hurt they were physically, but how they didn't even let that affect them, um, it, it just, I, I, like I, kept, I felt like I just kept hugging them and I couldn't stop and I, I just wanted to tell them how proud I was of them. I'm proud to be a Raging Cajun, that's for sure. It was so, it was so overwhelming. I, I couldn't stop crying. So I've been a part of the UL Cheer program for four years now, and every year I wanted to make finals, and it was like my dream coming in, and finally being able to make it to finals meant everything to me, and it kind of was just like a perfect way to end my uh, college career. Next on Inside Louisiana Softball, Head coach Jerry Glasgow rejoins us to preview this weekend's conference series versus Sunbelt foe UT Arlington. Truly there is something for everyone here from moving image arts to nursing to petroleum engineering to education to uh, voice to photography to political science to anthropology to sociology. I just I can't list the almost hundreds of opportunities that students have to find the perfect fit and the major that best represents what they would love to do. We have alternate certification programs, master's programs, doctoral programs, in addition to hybrid and online classes. So a student can definitely find his or her passion um, as far as what they want to do. Not only are we going to find the major that is the best fit for our students, but we're going to make sure they graduate. We have one of the highest graduation rates in the state, and among our student athletes, in fact, we have the highest in the Sun Belt Conference. Knowing that UL Lafayette has one of the top graduation rates in the state makes me feel much more secure in my decision to come here, and it makes me feel very excited and confident for my time after I leave campus. We have everything here to be able to make sure uh, that the students have the support they need as they go through the process. From a writing center that'll look over papers and proofread them for you, uh, to free tutoring services that students can walk in on demand and say, physics is not my thing, um, can you please give me a little bit of help? Uh, we have prep classes for the GRE, we have prep classes for the LSAT. Uh, we look at medical school and pre-med and law school and business school. We have MBA programs. We have many, many PhD programs um, so that students can uh, further their education as they progress. Welcome back to Inside Louisiana Softball. Darren Walker joined once again by the head coach, Jerry Glasgow. Coach, uh, big series again this weekend in the Sun Belt, UT Arlington coming to town. When you do take the field on Friday night, it'll be 16 days between home games. I'm guessing you guys are gonna be glad to be home. <laughs> well, you know, the fans that we have here are so special and they have such an impact on our ball club. They always lift our kids up and bring back a lot of energy. And at this point in the season when you're, you know, halfway, you're a little bit more than halfway through the season and that energy that the fans give us is just huge and we're very fortunate to have them. So we're looking very much forward to being here. We know that UT Arlington's a very good ball club. They just got a win over Arkansas last week, uh, top 20 school and, and, and SEC school. And they played uh, Texas A&M 1-0 here a few weeks ago. So they're a very uh, a formidable opponent and uh, we're looking forward to that series. Yeah, they're six and six in the conference, but uh, this is not the time to uh, let your guard down. You really have to put your foot on the gas at this point. Yeah, well, they've got a very good uh, sophomore pitcher, R.C. Phillips, Randy Carroll Phillips. And uh, when she's on, she's really a handful. And so we know this is going to be a war. We, they've got a really good hitting shortstop uh, that's batting up there in the 400-plus range. And we, we're, we know that it's going to be a really tough series. Their record doesn't indicate how good they play on their best nights and their best games they're really talented you mentioned the hitters they do have two uh, 400 plus hitters two 300 plus hitters only six home runs on the season uh, between those four so sounds to me like they don't rely on the deep ball as much as they do just manufacturing runs yeah they're more contact to gap hitters and uh, they put the ball in play they'll drive the ball between the outfielders and not as much over the fence but uh, very very talented 
You mentioned Phillips, uh, very good pitcher, um, but I did a little research, and she has given up 136 hits in 117 innings, so there will be some opportunities, I believe, for you guys to, to do some damage. Yeah, you know, we should be able to score four or five runs on anybody we play mm -hmm. with our offense as long as we get in the right mindset and we stay aggressive. And, and we're trying to learn how to do that. We're still – we're still adjusting as the season goes on to our lineup. I haven't locked in that lineup. I probably won't until right before the postseason because I'm trying to find the right combination. I'm still <laughs> looking for – I'm always looking for the best combination. And, uh, we, you know, we know what we did last week at uh, South Isle, and then we'll try some new things this week. And then here in a couple of weeks we'll lock things in and get ready for postseason. We still have a little bit of time, and uh, this is something that we wanted to address last week, but we ran out of time. But just talk about the, the naming of the field after Coach Yvette Girard and, and how that all came together and what it means to you. Well, Coach Girard was huge for the program, and it was really actually the idea came from some of her players, uh, some of her earliest players. and. They, they realized the need and that we recognize her effort and her contribution to our program. And, and they, the, you know, the, the former players actually caught, contacted me and asked me if I approved, and I, I was all for it. Mm -hmm. and, and then the first step was actually meeting with Dr. Maggard and, and, and inter, introducing the idea to, you know, our athletic directors. And, and then from there it just grew and, and – finally cultivated to the point that we we went through with it and and it's just great to see her get that kind of recognition because if you look back at her effort it was it was what she did for our program was really special and very unique yeah and it was a fantastic moment if you were in the stadium or on the field that day thanks a lot coach for joining us this week coming up next on inside louisiana softball we'll take a look at the upcoming schedule at the university of louisiana at lafayette our raging Cajun spirit goes beyond athletics. They bleed just like you bleed. There is no apprehension. There is no fear. Bottom line, they gotta come to us to get this done. All right, we decide what happens. We dictate what happens on that field today. Together on three. One, two, three, together. together. The Learfield IMG College Directors' Cup, the highly recognized mark of distinction in college athletics across all divisions, both men's and women's sports. Follow your favorite team's pursuit for excellence in this prestigious annual award through the directorscup.com, USA Today, or L Directors' Cup on Twitter. Learfield IMG College Directors' Cup, the crowning achievement in college athletics since 1993. If you're happy and you know it's Zydeco. Zydeco. If you're happy and you know it's Zydeco. Zydeco. If you're happy and you know it, then your feet will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it's Zydeco. Zydeco. If you're happy and you know it, Monge. If you're happy and you know it, Monge. If you're happy and you know it, nothing God will help you show it. If you're happy and you know it, Monge. Monge. Thanks for watching this episode of Inside Louisiana Softball. We leave you with the upcoming schedule for the Raging Cajuns.